Hello, everyone, and welcome to another New School and video. I'm here at ChargePoint headquarters, and I wanted to show you what I think is currently the best public fast charging option available. Uh, and in fact, I think it's currently the best DC fast charging option available. And I'm just going to sort of preemptively uh, answer what I think I'll hear from a lot of Tesla people is that, oh, well, what about the supercharger? No, uh, I think this or a variation of this station is better than the superchargers. And I think it's that way for several reasons. But the first is both a Chatamo and a CCS connection. This means that literally every EV built right now with a DC fast charging option can charge at this station with the exception of one. And uh, that's the Tesla Model 3. But that is more on Tesla than it is on ChargePoint. Uh, if Tesla were to build a Chatamo adapter that actually works with the Model 3, then they could use the station as well. And if they built a Chatamo adapter that was capable of accepting more than 125 amps, they could also take advantage of the faster charging rate. What excites me the most is what ChargePoint calls their DC Express Plus, because what happens is you can daisy chain all of these charges together so that if you have two of these stations in a row, it can double the power output to a single charger. In this particular implementation, this is the standalone station, and the way it works is it has two 31.25 kilowatt chargers linked together inside to produce a 62 and a half uh, kilowatt charging rate. And when you have two stations paired, it's 125 kilowatt charging rate. Someone had mentioned that they felt that amperage is a better representation of the speed of the station. And I agree with that to a certain extent, right? So the Volt EV, it can only charge at 45 kilowatts on a lot of these 50 kilowatt rated stations. And you ask yourself why? Well, it's because the Volt EV can accept all 125 amps, uh, but it can't accept all 500 volts. So it's sometimes misleading, uh, and, and it really is the current that sort of dictates the charging rate. This station can provide 156 amps, which is more than the Volt EV accepts. Put it into perspective, the superchargers can provide about 350 amps. So when you pair two of these together, it's very similar. Or the 150 kilowatt charger uh, that EVgo uses, it's made by ABB. That one also provides about 350 amps in order to provide 150 kilowatt charging rate. There are things that I feel like ChargePoint can do to improve this station. I think they should be offering some sort of a grid tied battery link up so that uh, businesses that try to buy and install these chargers don't have to eat all of those demand charges because now all of a sudden you're talking about linking two 60 kilowatt chargers together possibly feeding out 125 kilowatts at a time that's a lot of peak demand rate uh, that some businesses might not want to pay and because charge point primarily sells to individuals and businesses, they might want to consider creating that option. So along with this, they also have an option that they call the cube. Now that cube uh, allows them to link multiple stations at any given station, it apparently can support as much as 500 kilowatts. Uh, and so that's good as well because Chatamo recently released also that their standard will support up to 400 kilowatts. So these stations are going to be capable of supporting a number of different EVs, a number of different platforms, and charging them very, very quickly. Uh, personally, my favorite implementation would be to pair two of these together because it really does cover the current electric vehicles and the upcoming electric vehicles very well. And as long as it's clearly marked which ones are paired, if you had two, four, six pairs at a location, you would treat them a lot like Tesla owners currently treat the supercharger locations where you don't share a charger that's paired and that way you get the maximum charge rate. But even if you don't count that, if you have a pair of these, two Volt EVs can pull up charge concurrently 
both at their peak charging rates. The same with pretty much every other battery electric vehicle currently available. That means that you can charge in a Bolt EV up to about 70% of your battery in about 40 to 45 minutes. So Jaguar I-Pace, well, if there's no one else at one of those paired sites, they can pull up and charge up to 80% in about 40 minutes. So they can take advantage of that much faster charging rate. And we have a number of vehicles that are coming online soon that will also be able to take advantage of this much faster charging rate. So you have the Kia Niro EV, you have the uh, Kona EV, and you also have uh, currently the Hyundai Ioniq electric, all of which can, can charge at much faster rates. And in fact, Nissan had even teased the new LEAF, the 60 kilowatt hour LEAF, charging at over 100 kilowatts. So paired implementations, again, the DC Express Plus stations will be very helpful uh, for all of these faster charging electric vehicles that we're seeing on the market. One of the other things that I really like about this charger is it addresses one of the big uh, complaints I have that most other chargers is it focuses on this, the most important depth, I think. It's a little over a, a foot, I believe it's 16 inches. Uh, again, I'll, I'll link to the data sheet for this below. Uh, but it, it, you know, they go a little bit taller, which I think is fine, but it's this narrow option. So when you think about it in terms of implementation, you can easily start implementing these between parking spaces. This would allow you to not uh, impact the number of parking spaces while still facilitating as many vehicles as possible. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to charge at this station and I was really hoping to because this is the first faster than 125 amp DC uh, fast charger that's been installed on the west coast and is available to the public. Now, it's not that much faster, but it is fast enough to maximize the charge rate of the Chevy Bolt EV. Uh, but because I wasn't able to get this started, now I just defaulted back to using one of their tritium stations down there. Uh, the good thing about showing up at ChargePoint headquarters is, even if one of your chargers is blocked, there are still dozens more that if you need an emergency charge, you can get it. But it's still unfortunate because I wanted to test this out. I wanted to test out the functionality and because it's so new, I don't think customer service was really able to fully support it. And because this is a Sunday coming off of a holiday, I don't think the actual contact for immediate support was actually available either. Because whatever's wrong with this station at this point needs to be hard set. They already software rebooted, rebooted it and it didn't work. And I think I know what's causing it. And... Uh, I'm not sure, but I believe it has something to do with the Chatamo adapter because I believe it's telling people that the Chatamo adapter is actually currently active. So anybody who tries to plug in, anyone who tries to use this charger at this point will not be able to because the station believes it's busy. Now, um, that's an unfortunate uh, event for me, unfortunate for you, because I really did want to map out the faster charge rate, but really that's more about the Bolt EV than it is about this charger. And I'll have plenty of opportunities in the future to match up, map out the Bolt EV's faster charging rate. Really what I wanted to do though is because I'm so excited about the station, so excited about its possible implications for public charging moving forward, that I wanted to showcase it, I wanted to get it out there, and I wanted to let you guys know that it's available. So really, uh, I don't think this is an ideal charging spot for travel, but if you are in the South Bay area traveling through, uh, ChargePoint is here. This is their headquarters. Hopefully this station will be online for you guys to use. But even if it's not, you also have another 125 amp charger down there that really isn't that slow. And again, the other 24 kilowatt chargers that they have next to it. So there are really a lot of options if you don't want to... Um, have to wait or if you just want to check out the station and look at it uh, like I said I really like how it's implemented I'm seeing how future implementations would take place and I'm seeing uh, you know how powerful it could be and really the thing is like I said that that impresses me about this is this is the first 
charging option available to the public that in my opinion is actually superior uh, to what Tesla currently offers. And in fact, because of the way it scales, because of the way it pairs, because of the way it shares uh, the different inverter modules inside it, they'll be easily able to keep up with all of the things that Tesla is you know, planning to do, uh, increasing their chargers, their DC fast chargers, their superchargers to 250 kilowatts. Well, this already has you covered up to 500. Now, I do somewhat agree with uh, Elon Musk and J.D. Strabble uh, about how anything faster than 250 kilowatts isn't really necessary. Uh, I kind of do agree, but um, but even up to 400 kilowatts and 500 kilowatts, I think is justifiable. Anything past that, yes, I, I agree that it's it's unnecessary. But the reason for that has more to do with the range of electric vehicles that I see moving forward. Uh, and the energy consumption of some of the worst polluters that we need to convert over to electric vehicles, in particular uh, large SUVs and trucks, where you're going to only be seeing about two miles per kilowatt hour driving down the freeway, uh, a 250 kilowatt charge rate in something like a Tesla Model 3 might seem like a 100 kilowatt charge rate in a large truck that's a uh, you know DC uh, equipped pure battery electric truck but like I said I, I really do like it I actually see some very uh, compelling future implementations for this and I think if you're a business owner looking for DC fast charging options to draw new customers into your business this is a, a good option this is something if you're a business owner who's looking for possible DC fast charging options to make available to your customers to draw in a new customer or a new customer base. Uh, I think this should be very high on your list. I haven't been able to get much in the way of pricing out of a charge point, but I would really like uh, to see them price this competitively. Like I said, also uh, provide some sort of a battery tie option uh, so that business owners who implement this don't have to eat all of those demand charges. but Still, I, I see this as being a very powerful option that I think a lot of people should consider. And a lot of cities and municipalities that are installing public fast charging, they should also consider this. Electrify America, I think, I know you're committed, but from what I've seen of these stations in combination with the way charge point, how they implement their sites, uh, compared to what I've seen, out of EVgo, uh, Green Lots, and you, Electrify America, I think they're a very good option as well. Uh, again, I think it's really the only thing that I see comparable to uh, the current Tesla supercharger implementations, which really are right now the best implementations. Unfortunately, they aren't a public option, and without that, they're they're useless as far as every non. Um, Tesla EV owner is concerned. So good job, ChargePoint, and uh, I look forward to hopefully being able to charge on one of these soon. So uh, despite not being able to charge, actually charge at the CPE 250 station, I think overall I'm, I'm still glad to have seen it put in place. I, I have questions still about it, and you know, just to, to conclude on this you know, the review of it. Yeah, I, I still would like to hear more clarification from ChargePoint. See, that the, you could tell with the thickness, too, of it, it has the, the charging modules in the back, those 31.25 kilowatt charging modules, and it has two of them stacked in the back. But uh, ChargePoint also has a power cube option where you can stack multiple of those modules in the cube, I believe. And then it will route power from one charger to another to another and uh, that's that powerful option that will string multiple chargers together and, and my question is if you're using that power cube does that actually mean that the station can be narrower uh, essentially does it need those modules on the back because like I said right now it's about one foot four inches I believe is the quoted thickness of the station well if you take those power modules off the, the station itself is now only maybe eight to ten inches thick. So uh, again, that that means it has a lot more options and flexibility in terms of how it can be implemented. Even more, you know, 
easily sideways within a parking stall or whatnot. You can then stack multiples in a single parking lot. And like I said, uh, one of the advantages I, I feel like it has over the Tesla superchargers is because right now the modules are integrated um, and you don't necessarily need the power cube, my understanding anyway, to tie them together. You, you don't need to take up separate parking lot space with cabinets. You know, you have to store your dirty laundry somewhere. So a little bit thicker, but you know more vertical maybe it's unsightly i don't know it is a, it is a, a seven foot tall monolith there but but overall like i said it it's currently my favorite um design definitely of any of the available public chargers but pretty much of any charger that's a uh, dc fast charger that's currently available um anyway i'd love to hear what you think about the the new uh, CPE uh, lineup that uh, um, ChargePoint has in particular, the DC uh, Express Plus uh, chargers that are the ones that will be able to link together uh, and, and form much faster charging implementations. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.